Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are going to aim for the moon but I have no idea about lunar communications. We've unlocked lunar communications or it says so. We've got lunar range communications, we've done the tracking station upgrade, we've got nice little basic avionics here which includes deep space avionics. So you think, okay, lunar range communications, deep space avionics, we've got to be good to go, right, for the whole business. Uh, we've got our mission control upgrade for flight planning. We've got the tracking station upgrade. We've got more DSN power in theory, but God knows how that works with real antennae. And there's, uh, uh, I guess there's another upgrade, digital communications, which will be better. But not that much better. I mean, 841G versus 1.33T is less than a factor of two. So that depends on how all this stuff works. Level 4 tracking station research unlocked there. The digital communications is just right here. It's only 4. So, we once again have our Ariana 0, except this time it is painted. Uh, we will have to adjust the propellant GSE because I've upgraded the size of it. We will only have the Ariana 1 when we get the Viking engines, and then it'll be the Ariana 1. But this will be our paint job tentatively. Black. And we still have the Gamma 2 there, I've painted the core there, that's the main core, and then there's also a probe core on this stage right here, and they're on basic avionics. I don't know why I have to unlock zero. Okay, fine. Here we have the LR-105s, they are uh, on this level, so we have to purchase that too. We might as well just go ahead, and we can purchase that one as well. So we've got all that stuff going with this rocket and we've got somewhat larger cores and so we're going to have to fix the GSC. We're getting close to our limits here. The pad was for uh, 154 tons. This is now a 148 ton rocket. And what we have up here is a fully controllable core, but I've decided to have a dumb stage here. So there's no RCS here. And this uh, can control all of it, but we've got the RCS up here so that we can dump this part. And because it's a high pressure tank and heavy. So we're going to try for that. And the RCS should provide us with about another 100 meters per second or so. I thought about making this smaller just so that we need less power, but we are using here uh, the deep space core, which we also have to unlock. So things are costing a bit here, and controllable mass 1, 12,000 units of EC, which is weighing a lot, and uh, no additional tank volume, though we have the HTP and helium for the RCS thrusters inside already. So we will uh, see how this works out for us. We'll just toss it to the moon. Uh, I don't think we have enough delta V. It doesn't look like we have enough delta V, but at least it'll inform us about how far off we are. And then if we have to downsize the core or just replace it with uh, non-deep space core, just use a science core instead, we might have to resort to that. But the comms is a problem. So the basic avionics here with the deep space core is 72 watts and it's fairly heavy. And when we take a look at the power situation with the communication, and take this off actually. Uh, we see that it consumes too much. It produces uh, only 61 watts with the panels. It depends on our orientation of course, but this core does have a, a standby mode, a hibernation mode, and the hibernation mode is 4 watts. So if we shut down avionics here, uh, the consumption is 33 watts and we produce 61. We will see how that works out for us, and that's with the cyan's all activated as well. So the thing with the comms is, I don't understand how we are going to communicate with the moon. We've got lunar range communications, it says ground station tech level 1, so I've set it to tech level 1, and it's DSN tracking station, and I can't raise this tech level apparently. So that is a question. <laughs> um, how are we communicating with the moon? I mean, four bits out of six, uh, four bits one way receive 16. 
and then 150 halfway to the moon we can't. But I guess we're going to find out. We'll just toss this up and see what happens. Uh, to be honest, it probably doesn't have enough delta V to get to the moon anyway. We'll probably end up where our communication is still fine and not be able to do any science. Because the science that we have on here is not the science that we uh, have not done already. We've already done this science. We're just trying it out. After all, in real life they missed a few times too. We've spent a lot of money, we need to tool a few things. We've got the new avionics cores, right, because I replaced those with the higher level avionics and we just need a slight upgrade to certain tanks, um, but mostly it's the avionics. It's a lot of cost, but this is sort of like the final version of things for a little bit. Uh, uh, we'll slap the Vic, uh, Viking engines on after a bit though. We need to upgrade our GSE. Maybe I should try that plane. I'll hire a few more engineers just so they can work this place. Yeah, we'll, we'll try the plane again, since we don't have anything else to do while it's building. There's just a drone plane that's supposed to uh, collect some film camera science from high altitude. Okay. Last time I scraped off the... Oh, my throttle's not working. I scraped off the... Why is it going sideways? Stop. Okay, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it acting like it's imbalanced? I can't get this thing pointed forward. It doesn't seem like it's the... What is causing this? Parachutes seem packed. Landing gear seems normal. Engines have the same amount of thrust. Oh, wait. Oh, come on. Well, okay, l l let's just roll this one back. <laughs> this is... this is not right. Maybe it's had enough of me trying to do airplanes. Okay, first of all... Well, that seems right. Intakes are both open. Uh, let's just make sure that the chutes are both the same. Well, it didn't have any edits to save, so... Maybe I won't start the experiment until we're away. Maybe it's the flyby one. Oh gosh. Uh, um, I don't understand this behavior at all. I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell. It seems to go both ways, though. Well, I hope it's not like a general problem. The brakes don't seem to do particularly well stopping it either. You gotta try a different one. Oh, uh, we need crew for that. Um, do we need crew for this one? Yes, we do. Alright, looks like all those need crew. The fuel had been topped off. It wasn't a fuel imbalance. A little bit dark around here. Oh, this one doesn't have any fuel. Actually, you know what? That'll be fine. We just want to see whether it works or not. Oh, uh, you, you can turn off that engine. Okay, uh, I'm satisfied, actually. We're going straight. <laughs> I mean, it would have already had a problem. It would have already had a problem. So, yeah, we don't have any mission to do with this right now. Uh, it seems like it's just that one, so we'll probably just scrap that one and build a new one. All that training for a little bit of taxiing. And we're going to scrap this one. Okay, well that'll get us to the Ariana Zero launch. 
Really, we want to launch when we're properly lined up with the moon. Well, just eyeballing it from here, that doesn't look too bad. Okay. It's dark. We definitely don't want to launch this at night time. <laughs> oh, we won't be able to see it. Okay. We seem to have info now. Because we got the tracking station upgrade. So I can legitimately have my windows. Oh, does this compact not work anymore? Huh. Oh well. Yep. Well, something wrong with MechJev. Compact doesn't work. Or is that a special technology to have to unlock? This is a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. Ignition. And launch. It's shimmering. It's shimmering like it's stealth, like it's gonna disappear like a Romulan Warbird or something. It's gonna have a cloaking device. Okay, um... What does that mean exactly? Okay. I think we, we had a problem with one engine, but it was like right when it shut down. On the bright side, I don't think we're gonna have to wait for very long. Okay, fairings. So we can use the Gamma 2 stage to boost up in the right general direction of the moon. And then we're gonna have to hope for the best. Oh. I thought I had 9 tons of avionics. Oops. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. I was supposed to have nine. Honest. Oh, okay. I guess it was really close. Okay, um, nope, oh, that's fine. You hang out there. Okay. So then this stage is gonna prepare the next stage at our next periapsis. And then we'll try to go over there. Flight planning. First time. Actually, this is double pa- Oh, this is fancy. Look at this. It'll totally die before we get to do this, but... We could pass by the moon and come back and pass by the moon again and then crash into Earth's surface. Well, that, that'll sort of hang around. At least it's got a good periapsis. I mean, we could go on to the other side, but I don't think we have enough Delta V for this either. So, we got 1,700, this re will require 2,374. So, we're about 600 short of what we need. But shoot, we'll try it. You know, we'll just send it over there. And uh, just to check the comm situation, we should send it over there. Seems like we have more electric charge than I wanted. The probe has uh, 12,000. This core has too much. Where are you? It says 10,000. We, we don't want 10,000 out of that one. Okay, and... Go. Alright, uh, hold on there, RCS. Okay, separate stage. Alright. Um, shall we just use more RCS to see what we can do with it? It's only about 100 meters per second or so. We're barely getting beyond GTO though. We gotta tell it to hibernate. Oh, we got some extra visible imaging. This might be our first, like, constantly active satellite. Yeah, it looks like it can hold its charge all the way through. We're 1%. I mean, eventually you'll die, but... Anyway, so we need to eke out, let's say, 500 or so meters per second out of our rocket somehow. So let me go back to the VAB and see how we can do that. And But next time we're gonna try and lob 
the more interesting science out. First of all, I don't know why this has 10,000. I only wanted 1,000. I don't think that's going to get us a whole lot, but... Oh, well, actually got us 50. Another option is just to reduce this core's capability. It really only needs to do this part. It doesn't need to control that stage. So I'm gonna try to knock it down to point 0.3. And if it's balanced in power, we don't need to worry as much. Let's reduce how much RCS it's carrying. We only need a little bit to make minor adjustments as a mid-course adjustment. 2,000? Well, we'll carry as much electric charge. Well, let's see. Let's take a look at our... Now, if we put the nice science in, it's probably got to take more power. That's 0.203. Maybe I should have a mix instead of just having all the heavy ones. May only have one heavy one and then some light. Magnetometer and radiation and then a TV camera. This one, we got them in flight, but it didn't transmit in time, it looks like. So maybe we'll do micrometeorite. Data rate none, though. I guess, do we have to bring that back or something? I don't know. I don't think so. We'd never have brought back the space high one, so I don't know. Why is there no data rate? And this is under the point 0.2. I think that's basically our 700 right there. But now this stage is definitely going to have a problem. That's 8.891 tons, and this core can only handle 8. Now it's 9, and that probably dug into our what we just increased. And boy, that needs to be tooled all over again. Well, we got some extra visible imaging. I didn't check the comms. Hold on. Let me go back to that other probe. Well, it wasn't that high though. But still, we should check the comms with it. Well, it has the little green line there. I mean, but we sort of knew it would be green until 47,000 kilometers, so... It's not really anything interesting. Well, that seems legit. Alright, SAS on, throttle up, and... Ignition. And launch. Might not be a completely impossible inclination from Kurud, but... Seems like it would overfly the actual town of Kuru. Oh. Yeah, I don't think they'd like this, but it's sorta... Of, sorta of over water. Okay, booster set. Bearing set. Looks like we're gonna have more residual inclination than last time. Indeed, we're too far away from our ascending or descending node to correct anything. Of course, having two Gamma 2s like that, this, uh, if one of them fails, we're in a bit of a bind. We can't mount them tilted very nicely. I mean, if they didn't have this frame, we could mount them tilted through the center of mass so that if one fails, the other can still go. But with that frame, it's picky to do that. Okay, well, that was that. Got a little bit of RCS to do a mid-course correction. Well, we can sort of encounter the moon, even with this 5 degree inclination difference. Uh, we'll just rely on the mid-course correction for everything else. 2,100. 2,030. But 
maybe the rcs is a little bit tight on that but then we've got the rcs in this stage too that could start us off in the right way now do we have comms stations close to where we're burning out um should be keto okay oh wait we're unsettled um we'll have to use the rcs up there Okay. Well, Apple Labs is 386,000. That's nice. I probably should have kept that node. Okay, separation. Well, that gave us a little bit of force. Um... We have a we have a moon encounter. Yay! Anyway, uh, <clears throat> we are going to do that's too big a correction for this. Will that work better if we're? I doubt it's an inclination thing. It's not going to work better if we're closer. We could just do as much as we can or something. Let's try to get within twenty thousand kilometers. I don't know, a hundred is too much. Well, it's recharging and communicating. We run the science. That's spinning a bit. <laughs> spinning quite a bit. I think I would rather, rather spin a different way. But we'll, we'll activate avionics so it can do that. Keep rotating like that. Oh, I, I wanted to rotate the same way. Well, we can get the science communicated back directly from high orbit. So that's nice. Well, we are losing communications though. And I get the feeling that we're going to end up... with comms only as far as it said we we're going to have comms, which is not lunar range communications. Well, that means we won't be able to do our mid-course adjustment. Yeah. So we'll just have this high pass at 33,000 kilometers. Can I get rid of that? No, of course not. Even though I wanted to transmit directly from the moon, we do not seem to have a choice. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI. It is doing something. Oh, well. Well, we're coming back. Oh, well, we got the telemetry analysis from Moon Space Eye, all right. And we got visible imaging, okay. That just happened so fast I didn't notice. All right. So, successful moon mission as far as science is concerned, but we didn't maintain communications. It's, uh, well, it's not encountering the moon this time. Maybe we can do a minor adjustment so it re-encounters the moon. A high pass is better than no pass. Oh, but it's tweaky. In 39 days, we'll have a pass like that, maybe. But we'll have to break out of our very careful... Well, okay, yeah, it's a totally lopsided spin now. <laughs> Forget it. It wasn't careful at all. Activate avionics. It may or may not be encountering the moon. We've got a Schrodinger probe. Um, I'm actually going to ask for the warning for once. I want to know if this one has a low battery charge so that we can come to it and adjust its angle. I needed this one. Okay. All right. Gosh darn it. In fact, does this... Yes, now I can move that to tech level one. Okay. So you're tech level one now, okay? <laughs> 